This episode of the Athletes Lounge Podcast is brought to you by Du Bois County Garage Doors. I'm Hunter Way at the Athletes Lounge Podcast. I'm here with my guest, Shane Ross, with the, uh, say the city name again? The Medora Timberjacks. There we go. The, you know, uh, so just getting right into it, you know, you're with the TBL this year. How are you liking it so far? Yeah, it's been a good experience for sure. Um Kind of went into it with an open mind, um, went to the combine where we met, of course, and it was, it's been a great experience. I couldn't have I asked for a better team to end up with and a better, you know, front office to be working for. So it's been, it's been awesome just to be in the community and, and be back playing for sure. You know, you're away from the game for a little bit. So what's it like to be back? Is it as you it's, remembered you know, or, you, or you like it more this time around? You know, it, there's, I think life is giving me an opportunity to see some of the same scenarios and respond to them in different ways, for sure. Um, and I think there was the original adjustment, like, to just getting back to the flow of the game and, like, playing at the pace of the game. Because the TBL is, it's real, it's pretty physical. And then and then a lot of teams are are, they just run. You know, they get out and run, they push. So the pace of the game and then obviously with our team, it was like getting adjusted to being around a bunch of international pros again. You know what I mean? Like I was my cardio was good. I was playing a lot of ball, but just, you know, not around guys who were fresh off, you know, crew league wins or just back from NBA Africa and things of that nature. You know what I mean? You know, so what's it like? So what's it like when uh? You know, like the combine, you know, those guys are trying out. What's it like when you actually start going against the actual TBL competition? You know, with the combines, I think they're looking for, you know, you got guys that are trying to, um, they want to come in and, you know, be scorers for certain teams and situations. And then there's guys that they want to bring in who are, you know, role players. And my my sort of thinking going into the combine was just show them, you're in good shape and that you can hustle. And then if you need to score, you can go to the rim and score. You know what I mean? I kind of put scoring as like a secondary thing. And I was able to do that for the combine, of course. But then, you know, you get out here to training camp and you got to start playing your game, you know. And so that's when, you know, I kind of showed them what I was capable of. Um, but it was it's definitely been an adjustment for sure. And the combine there it's together at this point i mean now you're seeing those teams that have had guys come back for a couple seasons you got you know a couple guys on our team even that were here last season so just kind of that's the biggest difference where it's you know you're looking at a raw talent pool whereas you know what i mean or you're looking at like a pure athlete that will fit your role compared to now you got guys who are in their role. And in my situation, you know, I got scorers already. I got veteran pros already. So for me, it's like, I'm going to come in be a rebounder, dunker, defensive presence and, and shoot for the first time in my career, honestly. The, uh, you know, so you know, at this point in the season, I guess, you know, how, how well do you think, or how quickly do you think you were able to gel with this uh, team? Honestly. Um, it's like a, it's a process, especially with this kind of, you know, this kind of level of talent, you know, I don't think you, that's the one thing I don't, I think is kind of under, I guess, spoken about our team is every single last player on this team was an international pro, you know what I mean? Has years and years of experience. And a lot of us are veterans. Um, so that's kind of like that's the part where I'm like, I just have to find my role. Sorry, I space. What was your question again? <laughs> no, uh, you know, how easy was it to adjust to the, uh, the roster? That, yeah, I'm still in that process, I guess is the best way to describe it. Still adjusting, but definitely finding my, finding my niche on the team for sure. You know, and you mentioned, uh, you know, everyone on the team is a former international pro. Is that, uh, is that, do you think not like I don't think every team has that so do you think has that been an advantage for you guys that you guys are a seasoned group compared to some of the other teams yeah for sure and I mean even I think like I think that you think about like I'm trying to 
put together like a team in my head. Remember, remember when like LeBron went to Miami, right? So yeah. we're gonna bring LeBron into this. <laughs> when he went to Miami, like they that first year, right? Like it kind of took them a while to put it together. They got it together on time for the playoffs, and then they went on a deep run, got to the finals, right? And yeah. then lost to the Mavericks that year with yeah. like dirt. It was like his going out party or whatever, or going away party. And uh, what it like, you see that kind of play out from time to time, even with like the Olympic teams, right? Like you got all these superstar, you know, players who are used to being the guy, you know, and it's easy to say, like, I'm going to take a step back and you know what I mean? Fit a different role, but it's like, you know, that, that takes like edging the ego out of things a lot of times, but eventually, you know what I mean? That process, when it does happen, when guys are able to take a step back and like fill the role and maybe score a little less, rebound a little more for the greater good of the team. If you can get that right by playoffs, those are the teams that are, you know, championship teams. So, so, you know, I guess what's it been like being back on the road a little bit, you know, when you're on the road, what's it been like? So that part I like, you know what I mean? Maybe not the same day travel where it's like you're on a bus for three hours, hop off, warm up for an hour, then you're playing. Because that part, I'm like, leave that for like 17-year-old AAU Shane. But still, though, it's it that part of it's fun. And then check in again with me after this weekend because we go to West Virginia on the road tomorrow. Huh. So. The, uh, you know... Yeah, question. You know, you went to a a bigger school. Does the competition is it about equal? You know, or is it better? Well, so I think there. Once you get to a level where guys are making money to play, which that's the coolest thing about the TVL is like you can stay in America and like make the salary, if not more than you were making overseas in a lot of situations, if the right ones, if they're, yeah. you know what I mean. But. Yeah, I think I think for the most part, like I see guys that I was watching play for Michigan State, you know, what I mean, I'm playing against them on a regular basis. You know what I mean? Like um, there's guys that I've, you know, I've been watching play at a professional level too, just kind of back and forth from overseas who are now just, you know, staying here instead. You know, we got a, a bunch of guys on our team that you know there's money to be made elsewhere in different countries but they're like oh i got you know a family just kind of like my situation and and they're like i have the opportunity to still make a living and be a little bit closer to home and have a good time like you said traveling and playing ball like i think the competition is it's probably better for sure just because it's college is more raw you know it's more like systems whereas at the professional level it's kind of like you get in your groove and you play your game you know the you know you mentioned the same day travel same day you know same day game is the recovery harder than you remember or is it or is that just because like it's more frequent the, the recovery is just 10 times more crucial now it's like the, but that's the good thing about being on a team full of veterans because, you know, you look at the group chat and they're like, hey, you got the is the ice ready in there? You know, everyone's going hurt. in there. Yeah, somebody's going in there to do that recovery, too. So if I was on a team full of 23. And so luckily, like I'm surrounded by some good vets as far as like that recovery process and being in the right spots. You know, you mentioned, you know, kind of not like finding your role has been difficult, but you're still kind of working into it. You know, yeah. the, the what's, you know, at what point during, I guess, training camp or even during games, did you kind of maybe start to realize a little bit what you have to do to, I guess, fit in or, you know, establish a role? Oh, yeah. I mean, from the jump, you, as a player, you kind of, you know how to go into a situation, especially as a pro and just instantly feel it out. You know what I mean? And so... For me, it was like what I didn't realize is, for one, Medora has never kept any draft picks before. So that was that was cool that they decided to keep me. So I didn't realize that I was proving myself as much as I was. But, um, you know, I think instantly you have a little bit of a feel for it. But at this point, like now I understand my role. And I think more than anything, like now I'm just adjusting to I think this season was about like 
I'm going to find my way to be a positive impact on my team, whether I'm on the bench or whether I'm playing 10 minutes or if I'm playing 26 or if I'm playing 40, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to be a positive impact on the team regardless. You know what I mean? So that's allowed me to maybe only play 12, 15 minutes in a game, but have five rebounds, 10 points and two dunks. You know what I mean? Within those minutes, you know, it just keeps me more ready. You know, uh, speak about speak about dunks. What's the rim protection been like in the TBL? I know the TBL. It's it, it's the league. Maybe trends a little bit shorter at the center position. So does yeah. that does that allow you to attack the rim more? Uh, I mean, I'm gonna attack it regardless. I I've noticed that people will go up there and jump with me. <laughs> it's just you know I I you just gotta go a little bit higher, I guess. The uh... but no, it's you know there's some there's some good there's some good height in this league and there's some solid bigs you know as far as like scores and guys that can get up a little bit um but yeah i think that dunking is just kind of like a timing and rhythm thing yeah. obviously yeah. like the vertical part of it um is crucial but like timing and rhythm that's kind of what i've always my game has kind of always been in flow based on so you know at the combine you're able to like you know the we kind of discussed the format was hard to get into a rhythm with the you know six minutes on, and then you're oh, off. Yeah. And then, but the, you know, you, I thought you looked pretty impressive at the combine. You know, compared to like the average. You know, do you think you've been able to like I guess keep that momentum from the combine in terms of the the team's opinion of you going into the season? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think my my thing is what I offer this team is a motor. And like being locked in and like coming off the bench and doing that, getting deflections, getting blocks, getting rebounds, um, you know, going upstairs and getting dunks once in a while for that momentum. I think that's that's what's naturally been happening for my role with the team. Um, for me, it's just like the simple adjustments of like just picking stuff up on the fly. Like it had been a while since like just even like getting in the mix of like running plays and learning them in two days and getting back to the lingo of even just, you know, running sets and running different cuts and different actions and stuff. Like it had been some of like the language is even different since I was playing, you know what I mean? It had been three, four years. So that part of it was an adjustment. Um, but all, all good at this point. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I still have a, a head of steam and some good momentum rolling for sure. Now, you played internationally in Canada and Australia, right? Yep, yep. And then I toured um, in Chengdu or Chengdu, China for a little yeah. bit, just playing against this uh, couple good pros. I think Sun Yu was his name. He played for the Lakers, um, played against him, played against a couple other guys in China. And then, yeah, signed in Australia. Um, the crazy thing about Australia was I met, my teammate in Australia who got me the job with him as an import, he was my roommate at a G League combine that I was in. The, uh, you know, so I was going to, the I kind of forgot about the China part. I think I knew about it, but I, that yeah. throws my question out the window. I was going to say, you know, none of the Australian Canada are not extremely, I guess, exotic. You know, they're not, you know, too far different from America in terms of yeah. you right. can speak English language you know, barrier and all that yeah. yeah the but what's it you know what's it been like to be able to play i guess still in the states and then i mean that allows you to bounce home for a little bit right yeah absolutely well so the this season it hasn't like my whole thing was i'm gonna lock in i'm gonna fly out here no distractions um but yes to answer your question like all-star break the coolest part about the season so far is the way that they formatted all-star break and and just the all-star game in general um it allowed me to get you know a few days with my parents go home spend a week with my kids bring them you know bring my family my wife and kids out here to Medora to hang out for Easter weekend and like about four or five days so like well yeah if I were in a different country it would have had to been like contracted in I would day or two with them so that you know that's that's for sure one of the advantages of playing here you know what's been your uh i guess not your not your favorite part but what what have you kind of 
been pleasantly surprised with so far this year that you maybe weren't expecting? Honestly, like the, I have played in a lot of different places and the community piece out here, like I was on Tuesday, I was doing like, we go into these schools and we go into like the boys and girls club is where I was at on Tuesday. Um, like the community piece is cool because like, that's a big part of like my mission is giving back to the game. You know what I mean? It's how yeah. I realized I wanted to play again was just, you know, teaching the game and um, training and, you know, doing these free camps and clinics for kids where I'm from. Um, so yeah, yeah. It's been yeah amazing, honestly. <laughs> you, know, what, thank you. you know, right now, you know, where are you guys in the standings? We are eight and four. I think that puts us kind of like right in the mix. Um, there's like two or three teams with the same record as us. And then I think there's two or I think we're like third. Yeah. But like, I think we're tied, right? Yeah. I'm not, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not. A, <laughs> I'm, oh, I assume you like, guys don't standings watch this early. Oh, no, man. It's we just. Coach was like, yep, yeah, we're halfway through the other day. And I'm like, whoa, we're halfway through already. So, so the regular season is halfway through. Playoffs will be upon us in no time. You know, the, uh, you know, I guess, you know, with the, we kind of talked about how, like, you know, this league's been, you know, I guess good for you and get to, you know, you get to play again. And it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's better than playing with the Y for free. Well, I guess actually, <laughs> I guess you have to pay again the lot. So I guess it's yeah. better to get paid than be uh, paying <laughs> the absolutely the. Uh, but you know what's been the uh, you know is the uh, anything about the league kind of I guess maybe sh- uh, surprise you in the the uh, the um, the way teams play. Anything surprise you about that? So there's absolutely like the there were a couple games where just teams have been shooting the lights out, which I. I wasn't expecting to see just some of the impressive guard play because usually like really good guards, like they get scooped up overseas quick in the way that things have like transpired through like the pandemic and like the TBL becoming like a pretty much all the way professional league like that, like that's kind of changing the paradigm a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, you know, and at the combine, you know, there's a there's a mix of guys that you were there the second day, right? Yeah, day two. Yep. Yeah, day two. The there's a mix of guys there that were kind of like testing the waters, or maybe didn't didn't, didn't understand the talent level. And then there's some people that were like, "Yeah, we've done this before," you know. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess you were coming back into it after being out, and I get you impressed. But I've have you noticed that in the league, everyone's locked in, everyone's there to everyone's there for real there's no stragglers pretty much yeah yeah it's definitely once you uh once you get through that process you know what i mean it becomes a different level because once once you're seeing the tbl only so many people get through you know what i mean that combine right and it's cool to see you know like there's there's some draft picks especially there's a few from michigan too that are like still on their team with active roles and that's cool to see like guys getting drafted in and staying through that combine so that's like the testament to the combine like it doesn't hurt to go you should go like if you if you can hoop and you want an opportunity that's definitely probably the quickest way to get one in the states you know what i mean but definitely everybody's locked in and that because you you get to a different level when contracts start getting signed, right? When money starts being on the line, you know what I mean? Because now you're employed and you got an employer and they're looking at all the above, right? Like, is this guy, can he go into the community and make an impact? Can he, you know what I mean, play any different role that we need him to? Can he take a backseat to, you know what I mean, different players so that for the greater good of the team, like all that stuff comes into account at that point. It's not so much about like what what we see he can do, right? You know what I mean? Du Bois County Garage Doors, where you get big city selection and hometown service. Visit our website at DuboisCountyGarageDoors.com to see the products we offer or to schedule a service call at your home or business today. Have you had the... Have you had to change your game at all from your previous, I guess, overseas stints to now? 
I mean, so my games is my game is never going to change. It's just going to be about like how I use it, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. So you're always going to catch me in the gym working on my stuff too, because I feel like eventually, like even if it's one or two games, eventually, like I'm going to have my thirty, forty piece, and everyone's going to go, "Dang!" Like Shane can score like that, and like one of those it might not be this season it might it you know what i mean like i just know my game i'm always going to work on my game and have my bag right but this season it just it might be more about you know what i mean going and doing the dirty work yeah. and i that i got that that part's just built into me as a person so i can grind it out you know what i mean you know is there been you know do you do anything sp- cuz you know how old are you again you know make me say it huh yeah, I'm gonna make you say it. <laughs> they can they can go look on FIBA anyway. At 35. Yeah. yeah. And you've kept yeah, all your back. Going on 36 though. Jim's coming out quick. Yeah. You've you've kept all your bounce and you're almost 36. Is there anything you do for that, or are you just naturally more athletic than the rest of us? <laughs> Dude, so now now I'm giving secrets out. No, uh no, it's honestly I do a little bit of plyometric work like in the off season just to try to like stay explosive. But for me, it was like, I always just got in the gym and dunked and dunked. And so being back around these kids, training them, doing the company thing back home, you know, working out. And then all of a sudden I'm playing a lot more. And then the summer rolls around, I'm playing in these pro-ams. I think honestly it was like losing, I lost probably like 30 pounds over like three years and just got back to running and playing regularly. Um, and it just kind of like came back naturally, I guess. I was doing the plyometrics for like a couple months consistently for a summer. That probably put like three, four inches on my vertical. But for the most part, it's just been like getting back active and playing. Yeah. the But it's a blessing. I'm grateful for it. You know, the – uh Kind of talk about that. You know, talk about the company stuff. What do you do over there? Yeah, so we – it's – basically, we just straight up do basketball training. It The way that I got it formatted is to eventually, hopefully, have a lot more free stuff where you can just show up and there'll be a huge group or, like, a mini camp. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, for, mo- for the most part now, it's just, like, individual skills training um you know one-on-ones group sessions you know so you know basketball training company you know the you know have you you know the you know mentioned how the vertical came back a little bit you know the yeah in the time off did 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 you uh i guess do you think you're a better shooter now what you were when you were younger or do you think any of that stuff's gotten better maybe oh yeah absolutely i think like the development of my game has has definitely getting older and being a vet like has made me a much better shooter um like mechanically i think and then to be able to you know i didn't have my athleticism for you know like i did now for a while you know what i mean so like in my 20s about like 26 27 i was probably like 235 240 um but not not working on anything really yeah. just kind of playing to play and it definitely i think just over time getting in shape has just like changed everything taking care of my body going the extra mile like you said the recovery stuff dude like that's that makes a world of difference do you think the couple do you think the few years off kind of also helped where you don't have the wear and tear for a few years that's kind of that i was gonna say that too i think i think having the legs propped up you know what i mean not using them as much the rest doesn't hurt anyone yeah the, you know and i guess you know we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier what, what's your big goal i guess you know right now it's just to try to give back as much as possible just to yeah like let it ride see see what see what comes about from playing but i mean definitely like i'm i'm a as far as like goals i'm i'm more of like a enjoy the process enjoy the journey like i'm excited about practice today you know what i mean and then i'm also figuring out how to board my dog before we leave tomorrow like i just am a day at a time kind of person but i mean long-term goal 
I want to continue to make an impact with who, whatever that looks like. And if it is through playing, then I, I'm going to continue to welcome that for sure. And then if we can get a TBL championship, that'd be amazing too in the process. The uh, happy someone else is a day at a time person. Cause sometimes I'm like, I'm surrounded by people I like to book stuff two weeks ahead. I'm like, man, you're, you're thinking too far. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. It's, it, it becomes a little bit more of like a pressure once you're looking too far into the future. Yeah. The, so that's really all I have prepared question wise. Anything you want to shout out or anything you want to say? No, nah, man. I, I mean, I appreciate you having me on here. Um, like I said, follow us. Keep watching the Medora Timberjacks. You already know, man. I, uh, I'm going to keep on doing what I do. We're going to hopefully have a big run. And uh, no, I mean, that's shout out to all my people, anyone who's watching this. If you're watching this, you probably are in my corner and in my circle. So I appreciate every last one of y'all. I miss my fam, my wife, Bethany, my kids, Remy, Gabby. Um, and then, yeah, mama, daddy. My brother stopped here yesterday. So your dad followed me on Instagram two days ago. Nice. <laughs> the, he's, you know, a, he's the man. Yeah, your dad's cool. <laughs> the, yeah, well, no, thanks. Uh, thanks for doing it, uh, Shane. Yeah, man. No. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing it. I almost said Sean. I know your name, Shane. That's we talked about this before we actually started recording. <laughs> but no, uh, thanks for doing it, Shane. I've been Hunter Way at the Athletes Launch Podcast. So thanks. Hey guys, this is Hunter Way at the Athletes Launch Podcast. Please like, share, and subscribe where you can. Thanks.